dear students welcome back to the second semester bsc physics class in this session we shall discuss about thermodynamic scale of temperature and its identity with perfect gas scale at present in our day to day life we are using different types of thermometers and measure temperatures with different units such as degree centigrade or degree celsius degree fahrenheit kelvin etc these are based on different scales of temperature all these scales of temperatures or measurements are based on ice point and steam point in general among these kelvin scale of temperature is the internationally accepted standard for measurement of temperature as you know here in the figure you can observe there are three different scales of temperatures or the thermometers shown here the first one is degree fahrenheit scale here we have degree celsius scale and we have kelvin scale of measurement of the temperature among all these three scales of temperature these works on a common points this works on the points which are called as freezing point of water and boiling point of water the freezing point of water is also known as ice point boiling point of water is also known as the steam point all these three thermometers or the scales of temperature work between these two temperatures in general here as shown for the freezing point of water the temperature in degree fahrenheit is 32 degree fahrenheit that is equivalent to 0 degree celsius which is equivalent to 273.15 kelvin again boiling point of water anna now hege measure maartive antandre fahrenheit scale alli adra ಉಷ್ಣಾಂಶ ಇನ್ನೂರ ಹನ್ನೆರಡು ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಫ್ಯಾರೆಂಟ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಶೆಲ್ ಸೆಲ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಸ್ಕೇಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ನೂರು ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಸೆಲ್ಷಿಯಸ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಕೆಲ್ವಿನ್ ಸ್ಕೇಲ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಮುನ್ನೂರ ಎಪ್ಪತ್ತ್ ಮೂರು ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಒಂದು ಐದು ಕೆಲ್ವಿನ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಯೂಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಥರ್ಮೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಕನ್ವೀನಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೆಜರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆಂಪ್ರೇಚರ್ಸ್ ನಾವು ವಿ ಶಾಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಥರ್ಮೋನೈಟ್ thermodynamic scale of temperature for this the efficiency of a reversible carnot engine we shall consider and the efficiency of the reversible carnot engine depends only upon two temperature between which it works and is independent of the property or nature of the working substance here the two temperatures are the temperature of the source as well as the temperature of the sink any reversible engine works between these two temperatures lord kelvin in 1848 suggested a new scale of temperature known as absolute scale of temperature he worked out the theory of such absolute scale called kelvin's work or thermodynamic scale and showed that it agrees with the ideal scale now let us look into the theory of the absolute scale of temperature 
Suppose a reversible engine absorbs Q1 amount of heat at a temperature theta 1 and rejects Q2 amount of heat to the sink at a temperature theta 2. Then the efficiency of the engine is based upon or it is a function of these two temperatures. We can write efficiency equation as eta is equal to q1 minus q2 divided by q1 so where q1 minus q2 gives the work done of the engine to the amount of heat absorbed from the source this ratio will give the efficiency of the Carnot's reversible heat engine this can be written as a function f small f we have taken to represent the function it is equivalent to a function of theta 1 comma theta 2 where theta 1 and theta 2 represents the temperatures of the source and the sink respectively this can be written as 1 minus q2 by q1 that is equal to f of theta 1 comma theta 2 therefore q1 by q2 is equal to 1 over 1 minus f of theta 1 comma theta 2 so this function this ratio can be written in terms of another function represented by capital letter f it is a function f of theta 1 comma theta 2 both small f and capital F are universal functions of the temperatures theta 1 and theta 2. Similarly, if another reversible engine works between a pair of temperatures theta 2 and theta 3, let us consider another two temperatures theta 2 and theta 3 for another reversible heat engine where theta 2 is greater than theta 3. It absorbs a heat Q2 and rejects amount of heat Q3. Then we can write the ratio Q2 by Q3 is equal to F of theta 2 comma theta 3. When compared with the equation 1, we can write this equation for another reversible engine working between the temperatures theta 2 and theta 3. So the expression becomes like this. Now it works between theta 1 and theta 3 where theta 1 is greater than theta 3 then the expression becomes q1 by q3 is equal to f of theta 1 comma theta 3. Let this take equation number 3 multiplying equations 1 and 2 we get this that is q1 by q2 into q2 by q3 is equal to q1 by q3 that is equal to a function of theta 1 comma theta 3 multiplied another multiplied by another function of theta 2 comma theta 3 therefore we can write this as f of theta 1 comma theta 3 on the left hand side that is equal to f of theta 1 comma theta 2 into f of theta 2 comma theta 3 on the right hand side. So this should be capital F. Let me make a correction for this small f as capital F. Hence, this is called the equation number 4 is called a functional equation. Now, f of theta 1 comma theta 3 can also be written in other terms that is phi of 
theta 1 divided by phi of theta 2 into phi of theta 2 by phi of theta 3 that is equal to phi of theta 1 by phi of theta 3. Since the functional equation does not contain theta 2 on the left hand side, therefore the function f should be so chosen that theta 2 disappears from the right hand side also. In other words, the LHS is independent of theta 2. Therefore, for this equality to hold, the function f must be equal to the ratio of two functions so that the product on the right hand side does not contain theta 2. Hence, from equation 4, we get q1 by q2 is equal to f of theta 1 comma theta 2 that is equal to phi of theta 1 divided by phi of theta 2. Since theta 1 is greater than theta 2 and q1 is greater than q2, the function phi of theta 1 is also greater than phi of theta 2. Thus, function phi of theta is a linear function of theta and can be used to measure temperature. Thus, Lord Kelvin suggested phi of theta should be taken proportional to theta. That is, phi of theta 1 proportional to theta 1 and phi of theta 2 proportional to theta 2. Then we have q1 by q2 is equal to theta 1 by theta 2 or theta 1 by theta 2 is equal to q1 by q2. So these are the equivalent ratios of the temperatures of source and the sink equivalent to the heats corresponding to source and the sink. This equation shows that the ratio of two temperatures on this scale is equal to the ratio of heat absorbed to heat rejected. This temperature scale is called Kelvin's thermo thermodynamic scale or absolute scale or work scale of temperature. Thus, two temperatures on the thermodynamic scale are to each other as the absolute values of the heat absorbed and rejected respectively by a Carnot's engine operating between reservoirs of these temperatures. Finally, the thermodynamic temperatures are called absolute temperatures because they are independent of any material. Now, let us discuss about the identity of perfect gas scale and absolute scale of temperature. Absolute scale of temperature is also called as the thermodynamic scale of temperature. For this, let us consider the working of a Carnot's engine and by definition, the working or the efficiency of the Carnot's engine using a perfect gas scale as the working substance is given by eta is equal to 1 minus q2 by q1 that is equal to 1 minus t2 by t1. On the absolute scale, Efficiency of the same engine can be given by eta is equal to 1 minus q2 by q1 that is equal to 1 minus theta2 by theta1. Here, here you can observe the efficiency is written in terms of the temperature theta2 by theta1 in the perfect gas scale. 
since we use or we denote T for the temperature in case of a perfect gas equation. And for the efficiency of a Carnot engine represented by the absolute scale that is theta 2 and theta 1. These are the temperatures on the absolute scale. Here theta 2 is the temperature corresponding to the heat Q2 of the sink and theta 1 is the temperature corresponding to the heat Q1 of the source. On comparing both these equations, we have T2 by T1 is equal to theta2 by theta1 or it can be written as T1 by T2 is equal to theta1 by theta2. So, let this be equation number 3. Now, consider Ts and Ti are the steam and ice points measured on the perfect gas scale. Now Ts minus Ti, the difference between the steam point and the ice point is equal to 100. On the thermodynamic scale, for the same two fixed points, that is the steam point and the ice point, as shown above, we can have theta s minus theta i is also equal to 100 where theta s is the temperature corresponding to the steam point and theta i is the temperature corresponding to ice point. These two temperatures are represented on the thermodynamic scale. On the perfect gas scale, the efficiency is given by eta is equal to Ts minus Ti divided by Ts. It is based on the definition of the efficiency of the Carnot engine. This is equal to, we can write 100 by Ts because the difference Ts minus Ti is equal to 100 as given in the equation number 4. On using a thermodynamic scale, the efficiency eta is equal to theta s minus theta i divided by theta s that is equal to 100 by theta s. This is written in a similar way. Now since the efficiency must be same in either scale, we can write 100 by T s is equal to 100 by theta s. Therefore, T s is equal to theta s. That is, we can say the steam point on a perfect gas scale has the same numerical value as on the absolute scale of temperature. Comparing equations 4 and 5 and using them in equation 6, we have Ti is equal to theta i. That is the ice point is same on the both the scales. Ti represents the ice point in the perfect gas scale and theta i represents the ice point on the absolute scale of temperature. Considering equation 3 and that zeros of two scales are identical, we conclude that T is equal to T. T is equal to theta. That is, the temperature on the perfect gas scale represented by T agrees with the corresponding temperature theta on the thermodynamic scale. Thus, Kelvin's thermodynamic scale is completely identical with the perfect gas scale. So this is the inference obtained as the identity of perfect gas scale and the absolute scale of temperature.